let's get back to basics, and today we're going to be going over materials. Now for this tutorial, I am going to be using this free asset that I found in the asset store that is called PBR Materials Sampler Pack by Integrity Software and Games. So you can find that in the description below. In order to get 3D objects to render to a 2D screen, we need a few things. Starting off, we need a mesh. And the mesh is just going to be all those little polygons that kind of make our objects. You can see that here. And then also, we will need something called a material. And so what the material is, it's, it's essentially a 2D image that wraps itself. And so instead of being stuck with just a bunch of, you know, wireframes, we now have something that's kind of colored in there. Now, along with the material is something called textures. Now we can add actually references for the material to different textures. So textures again are image files that contain information about the surface of the material or how it should look. And so we can actually add a reference into each one of these little squares here and each one will give a bit more information of what the surface of this should look like. Now along with the material and all the textures that it's referencing comes the shader. And so the shader will Will take all this information that the material is saying and that is what's going to be responsible for how the material is going to be applied to the mesh and also it's going to determine how the material interacts with lighting and so you'll see actually the shader up here this is going to be the universal render pipeline lit I'm using the universal render pipeline in this project and there's a bunch of other different kinds of shaders that you can use and so since I'm using the universal render pipeline if I switch this to something like standard you'll see it all turns pink it gets upset because it's not using the right shader with the right pipeline that I'm using. Now, if you recall, that is the last piece to the puzzle to render something to a 2D screen is the pipeline. We have three of them to pick from. In Unity, we have the built-in render pipeline, the universal render pipeline, which I'm currently using, and then we have the high definition render pipeline for very, very fancy graphics. So since I switched this to the standard pipeline, it's obviously not going to work. That's not the right shader for it. So if I go to universal render pipeline, hit lit, boom, we're back in action. Now that was just a brief overview of how all these things interact and work with each other. Now I wanted to dive into the specifics of materials and how we can use them and how all these little different variables interact and work with our materials. So to kick it off, I'm going to come up to window. I'm going to go to project manager, and then I am going to import the PBR materials sampler pack. Now, once that is imported, I'm going to go ahead and get out of there. And you know what? I would not be shocked if these are not using the right shader yet. So let me click this and you can see, yep, it's pink. And we could come here, we could go to universal render pipeline and we could hit lit and that should fix it up right there. You know, I'm going to drag it onto here just to see. Yeah, it's fixed, but all these other ones are not fixed. And so if we want to do this kind of in bulk, we could go to windows rendering and then render pipeline converter. And again, this is if you're using the universal render pipeline, if you're using like the standard pipeline, it'll probably be just fine. Let's see, initialize converters, save and continue. And then once it's done that, you just convert the assets. All right, I'm gonna exit out of this. And then if we click through these, just to double check them, you can see they are not pink up here. So that means it's converted them. Now, in order to go over some of these attributes, I think I'm actually going to choose one of the metals in this. Now, let's see here. Uh, I think, I think metal 11. No, no, not that one. No, metal 17. Yeah. All right. Metal 17. I like this. You know, it has, it's a bit of rough, has some reflectivity and also has some depth to it. All right. Yeah. Let's recreate this one. So in order to do that, I am going to go ahead and come here. I'm just going to right click and click material. And I will just call this my metal. And I am going to drag that there. So let's recreate this with this. Now, starting off, I want to point out that there's uh, two workflow modes here. There's specular and metallic. You can play with these if you'd like. It's kind of like a, they get to the same spot, but you got to find out which one just feels right to you. So if we increase the smoothness, you'll notice that this is where it gets really shiny and reflective. Here, let me change the color a bit here so you can see it better. There we go. And so for the specular map, we can also move this around and see now it's like a shiny, clear ball but we can also get the same way with the metallic workflow so if we just increase this all the way here with the metallic map all the way to the top 
And see, that's the same thing. So you just got to pick which one you kind of like to do. We can also change our surface type to transparent if we'd like. So that would make it see-through. Let's see here. So you can see, you, you can kind of see through it. But if I come here and lower the alpha a bit, now it's kind of like a crystal ball almost. But we are turning this into a metal, so we're going to go ahead and not do that. I'm going to be changing this back to opaque. Now, if you want to save on performance a bit, uh, receive shadows, you can always turn that off. That will help there. But let's move down to surface inputs. So if we're just changing the color, you can just do that with this guy really quick. Pew, pew, pew. Nothing too fancy there, but we have a thing called a base map. Now the base map can be called multiple things. It can be called base map, albedo, or diffuse map, and they all mean the same thing. The diffuse map is going to be responsible for all this light coming in and reflecting off it. So you'll see that the sun shines right here and it's shooting straight out, so it's very, very white. But around here, it's not as direct light, and so it shoots off and it's not as, you know, white. So that is pretty much what a diffuse map is responsible for. Let's add in the diffuse map here. So if I click this little circle, let's see, it was metal 17, I think. There we go. And this should be it. This should be its diffuse map. And so if I click on metal 17 here and just confirm, yeah, that's its diffuse map. So you can see it's just reflecting a bit different now. Next up, we have the metal map. And it's going to sound stupid, but it's going to be responsible for how metally this is. So we can change it and adjust it here, but the metal map can take care of that. And so if we, again, look up metal 17 and then look for, yes, metallic, You'll notice that the slide bar is gone because this map is now responsible for it. Now, next up, we have our bump mappers. First, we have the normal map. The normal map is just for tiny groove. And then the height maps are going to be for a little more extreme cases. If we had like a brick wall, you'd obviously had a bit of a difference between the pixels and the heights there. So let's see what happens when we add these maps. So you can already see here with the normal map here, it's added some dips and grooves here. Next, I'm gonna add the height map. So I'm gonna come here, there we go. And you notice it's called the displacement map here. It's kind of like the base map, how base map can be called albedo or the diffuse map. This can be called the displacement map. And you know what, you can't really see too much there. I'm actually gonna come over to this cube that I have and let's observe the difference here. So let me zoom in. Now I'm gonna alternate between having it there and not having it. So let's go none and then back on. So you'll see this actually kind of pops out a bit right here. So it's actually, it's actually taking the geometry and it is moving the pixels around. So there's a bit of a cost there. Uh, you know, if you're gonna start chopping things off, you know, start chopping off the height map, normal map, metallic map, if you need to, if you're, you know, working in VR and really need to save some processing power. And now last of the maps here, well, there's the emission map, but the last of the maps here that we're gonna use for this material is the occlusion map. And the occlusion map is going to help out when it comes to like blocking light on an object. So say there's like a crack in the sidewalk, lights shining through, and you know, there should be a difference in shadows on that material. And that is what the occlusion map does. So let's add that and see what the difference is there. And yeah, you can see it's very dramatic now. So those, those cracks really have a different kind of tint to them. And the cool thing is, since we changed it here, and that's the same material, this one also changed. So if you ever change one material, well, it changes both materials. And you can do that and see that here. So there you go. Uh, we can also make our objects light up and emit light. You can do that here by clicking emission. And then as you would imagine, you can have an emission map, which better defines how that would work. And you know what, we don't want to do that for our metal here. Last I want to go over is this tiling. So with tiling, uh, pretty much what it does is it determines the number of tiles per unit on the surface of the mesh. So in smaller terms or quick terms, it's uh, the higher the number, the smaller the pattern. So if we did five in five, you'll see this got very, very tiny over here. And then we also have an offset we can play with. So this will just change the offset of the pattern. So this will shift things over. And that could be useful if you're trying to line things up on, a, like, say, a brick wall. But yeah, there you go.
I know I normally do VR tutorials and videos, but I felt like touching on some of the basics because it's very easy to forget about the basics. Don't worry, I'm going to go back and do more VR tutorials in the future, but I also wanted to start this series on the side or in parallel to all my other videos, just so we remember, well, the basics. Thank you all to my Patreon members. Without you, I cannot do this, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.